Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the differences between the terms overcoat, top coat, body coat, trench coat, and all other outerwear coats that you wear when it's cooler outside. <laughs> First up, let's discuss the overcoat. What I'm wearing here right now is an overcoat. Traditionally, that meant it was a fabric that was heavier than 30 ounces per yard, so it was really quite heavy, and the goal was to keep you warm during cold winters. It was worn over a suit or a jacket, and it also was supposed to block the cold wind. Therefore, it was always so long that it at least covered your knees, and sometimes it would go all the way down to the ankles. Now, today you hardly see overcoats that reach the ankle anymore because it is quite a special look that Hercule Poirot sometimes pulled off, but otherwise it's quite difficult. Personally, I like for my overcoat to touch the back of my calves because it's a good balance between warmth and looks. The first overcoat as we know it today was probably the Chesterfield, which was invented sometime around in the 19th century, and today they're very popular, mostly as single breasteds with a velvet collar. To learn more, please check out our Chesterfield guide here. That being said, I prefer double breasted overcoats because it's a double layer of fabric that keeps me warmer than just single breasted, and it also looks better because it's more symmetrical in my opinion. In terms of styling features, there's really nothing you can't do. Patch pockets go well with a more casual fabric like the one I'm wearing here right now. On the other hand, if you have a navy blue cashmere overcoat, probably flat pockets are better. When you have double breasted, go with peak lapels. With a single breasted, you can either have notch lapels or peak lapels, depending on what style you're going for. Unlike regular suit jackets, overcoats have something called the Ulster collar. And you can see it here on the trench coat. That means it's like a notched lapel, but they go out very far. Same thing I'm wearing here right now. It's like a notched lapel, but the collar comes out as far. And that's a feature specifically seen in heavy winter overcoats. To learn more about overcoats in general and the different styles, please check out our overcoat guide on the website here. Next up are body coats. As the name implies, it's a coat wearing your body but it's actually not an overcoat. Instead, it is either a tailcoat, a morning coat, or a frock coat. It has the name body because it's tailored, so it sits very closely to your body, and it's a garment that is very formal in any case, and therefore you hardly see it anymore today. The best place to see morning coats is the Royal Ascot Horse Race in England, or if you want to see a tailcoat, you have to go to a white tie ball, and frock coats are even older and mostly not worn by people anymore today, unless they want to reenact the good old times. We'll discuss the morning coat, the tail coat, and the frock coat in more detail in another video. Next up is the great coat, which is a heavy overcoat with a military heritage. Great coats include a British warm, which is what I'm wearing here right now items such as an Ulster or widely cut double-breasted overcoats with a distinct V-button silhouette. They're usually cut without any waist suppression, meaning they're very loosely fitting, they're heavy, and they're draping well. The whole idea was to create a garment that looked impressive and kept the men in the military protected at all times. Great coats are always double-breasted because military had this double-breasted shape which is supposed to be more powerful and more impressive. You can also find epaulets or other military hallmarks such as throat latches. For example, this overcoat here has the epaulets, which is part of the military heritage. If you like history and you want an overcoat that keeps you warm, I can really recommend a British warm or another kind of great coat with a heavy fabric because they're really workhorses will last you for years to come and always look good and different from what other people are wearing. So next up is the top coat. Technically, a top coat used to be a very lightweight overgarment that was made of fabric that was 18 ounces or about 500 grams or less. Now, back in the day, that was a lightweight outerwear fabric. Today, 
it's actually a heavy outerwear fabric. Top coats are typically only trench coats, such as the one you can see here, which is made of a cotton gabardine. To learn more about the trench coat garment, please check out our in-depth guide with video here. The idea of distinction was to have something that was really heavy for winters and something that was more lightweight for the in-between seasons in fall and spring. You should definitely have at least one top coat and one overcoat in your wardrobe because they're just meant for different seasons, they have different weights, and they feel very different as well. Wearing an overcoat in October when it's not really cold yet will make you very uncomfortable and sweat all the time. On the other hand, a trench coat is perfect because it protects you, keeps you warm, but you're not gonna overheat. If you want to learn more about top coats, overcoats, and great coats, please check out our guide here. If you want to learn how to tie scarves that go with your overcoats and top coats, please check out our scarf guide. And if you're interested in gloves, look at our glove guide. And all the accessories can also be bought in our shop.